Come on, babe. What's up, killers? How you guys doing? Nice to meet you, How Andy. You doing? Nice to see you. You guys feeling good? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! We're about to get this party started. Everybody come around. Come on. Everybody come on in. Come on in. Number one, I want to tell every single one of you, super grateful for you. This workout is about beating the quitting mind. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, guys, what's my shirt say? What's it say? What's it say? Read it. One more time. All right, how many motherfuckers at one point in your life fell on your face and you came back? Raise your hand. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this weekend's about. Listen to me. If you're here this weekend and you don't leave change, you're fucking dead. You guys, everybody hear me? Let me explain this to you. If you're here tonight and you're here tomorrow and you don't change, you're dead. You're dead. You're not even alive. This weekend, you're literally going to have a fire hose put up to your mouth with how to be a winner. That's it. Okay? So this first part, this is called physical, and then it goes mental, then it goes business. And the reason why we do a workout in the first part of our life is because I can't do anything with any one of you until you change you. Until you're the best version of you, I can't do anything with you. Some of you that you're here right now and you're like, I'm here for the business strategy. That, that strategy doesn't work for you until you start taking care of yourself. Everybody with me? Okay, listen, so it goes physical, mental, business. You get your physical health right, you're mentally gonna be a savage, and then you're gonna kill it in business. And I dare you try to shortcut the physical part, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna compete, and you're never gonna be the best. And so if you don't like that, get in your car, call your Uber, and get the fuck out of here. You guys got me? But you guys already knew I was gonna say that, okay? And by the way, I just wanna tell you the truth, right? The more that you take care of yourself, the more that you love you. Okay, so here's the goal. Who can become addicted, right, to not quitting? Who can become addicted to doing the hard shit? Some of you in here, you got the language down, you watch the videos, but you don't live the life. That's the reason why you don't have what you want. It's not because you can't get it, you quit. And everybody said you were gonna quit, and you're fucking proving them right. And so tonight, beating the quitting mind, me and Jacqueline, our team, Elliot Army, you guys, how we're gonna make it is we're never gonna fucking quit, ever, ever. They're gonna bury us and we're never gonna quit. And you guys gotta understand this, every single one of you, you hear the people screaming this weekend, getting fired up, and you look at them, you're like, dude, it's, it's getting irritating. We're irritated that you're a fucking loser. Let's go. Yeah. All right? How about that? How about that fucking irritation for a minute, right? I'm irritated that you keep making promises to your family and you're not fucking keeping them. How about that? I'm irritated that there's people that actually believe in you and you're letting them down. How about that irritation? Okay, so listen, so I love all of you guys. I believe everything in life starts with honesty. It starts with the truth. And the truth is, is that we can never quit. And that's how we're going to make it. That's a guaranteed and sure way to success. Now, with tomorrow, with the strategies, with the mindset, with how to recreate yourself, with the things that are important to be a winner, all these things that you learn, dude, you're going to take that shit and not quitting and like working on these things that we do tonight, which is like do the hard shit, you're going to go win and you're going to fuck everybody up. So I love you guys. My number one goal is to build the greatest leaders on planet Earth. Let's go! Every single one of you. Listen, I look at some of you and you're ugly. I know. So I can't fix that you're ugly, but I can get you in shape, which will make you more attractive. And that's what I did. Hey, I'm going to be honest with you. Listen, my wife, like I married up with her, but I was fucking ugly. Okay. So here's the cool thing, right? God didn't bless me to look like Tom Cruise. Okay. But what I do know is that I get respect because I take care of myself. And we're in an era where people don't. So rule number one, when you walk into a room, you want people to look over and go, moral authority. I don't know who he is. I don't know who she is, but I know they take care of themselves. So immediately, I'll give them some respect. I like that. I like that. So we're going to start working on that right now. Here's what I'll tell you. Give it all you got. But if someone is next to you, please do me a favor. Leaders are the only ones that make it. If you're in it for yourself, you got to live for something bigger than you. If you look to your left, you look to your right, and there's someone struggling, do me a favor. Step the fuck up and help them. Yep. Say, hey, man, don't quit. You know what? I just did my 25. I see you struggling. You know what? I'm going to do some more with you. I want to see tonight who are my leaders. And by the way, if you've never been one, this is the place to start. This is the fucking hero-making machine tonight. Okay? Let's go grind this shit.
super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Is it hot down there? It's hot everywhere. It's going to be fucking hot as shit, bro. And listen, we make it hot because we want you uncomfortable, which is the fucking start of this bitch. You can't make it through a little air conditioner session. You're never going to make it. Yeah, you're never, and Brad will be like, need to chip in on the fucking electricity bill? Yeah. There's Brad. Brad. Brad always says, he's always saying, he's always like, you guys need me to chip in on the electricity bill around here? He's like, quit being so fucking stingy with it. That's my boy. Let's go, baby, let's go. All right. All right, guys, number one, you're in the right place. Look around. Pretty fucking packed, isn't it? Hey, isn't it cool to be packed with like-minded people that want to fucking kick ass and win? It's pretty cool shit, isn't it? Number one, I want to tell you, the reason why we do this event here, this is our home. It's an event, an event center. Last time you guys went to an event, was it where the person worked? Yes or no? No, you didn't go where they worked. They took you to some place. You checked in, you went and got a seat, and then you watched, you heard, you went home. This is our life. This is, this is what we built. This is what we pray that you'll go home and build. You want to fucking do something great? This is what has to be built. Every one of you guys, kitchen table, had an idea? Here we fucking are. All of you guys in here, my number one goal with you isn't to teach you to make money, it's to teach you to become who you need to become to get everything that you want. Yeah. And the number one reason why a lot of you in here aren't getting what you want is because you're not who you need to be. So the Bible was wrote a long time ago, how we can do right things, how we can get close to Jesus, how we can live a good life, things to expect, what evil looks like. This is the Bible for entrepreneurship in here today. Everything you're going to hear all day long, all of it, all works, or we wouldn't bring it to you. So today, today's about self-assessment. No egos, no pride, no entitlement. Nobody's fucking better than anyone. I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. But whoever can recreate, who, whoever can find their holes and fix them, that person is the most dangerous one in the room. And the one that can do it to themselves and then can help others do it is the most valuable. And this market fucking rewards value. You guys get it? Yeah. Everybody have a seat. Let's go. Let's train. Let's get it, baby. In our company, we don't say we can't do that. And some of you, you're too fucking good and you don't get involved in your company enough or in your business enough so you don't get your hands dirty. Our hands always stay dirty, okay? Uh, it's, it's important. We do all the hard shit. My beautiful wife right here, who's in a relationship? Raise your hand. If you're in a relationship, I will assure you, if you're going to compete with me or someone like me who's really good at what they do, but if they're in a relationship, their relationship's on fucking fire, I'm going to kick your fucking ass, and that person will kick your ass if your relationship is not. Me and my wife, we go everywhere together. You cannot compete. You cannot compete with, with, with if you have an employee or a teammate or something. You can't compete and get that person to grow if their family won't be on board. It can't happen. And so I'm going to give you guys a quick overview. I've got my beautiful wife, Jacqueline, here. People, people run... People run one of two ways. They run from a life they fucking hate or they're running towards a life they want. Now, I want some of you in here to think, how many of you right now are sick and tired of being sick and fucking tired of not getting where you want to go and not becoming who you fucking want to become? How many of you? Okay. Now, how many of you in right now, you're like, I'm good. No, 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 no. Like, I got a good life, Andy. 
I got the cars, I got the house, I'm good. But I want this next level. If that's you, I will fuck you up if I stay hungrier than you. You gotta keep a chip on your shoulder. And what I see is that some of you in here, you're making a little money, but you're not hungry no more. You're fucked. You're gonna go down, you're gonna get taken out. Never get comfortable, ever. That will be the death of you. And that's why if you have a home and you're in a relationship, you have to grow together. Me and my wife, we embarked on this journey together. Does anybody know what hardship is? Yeah, you do, but does your partner. If you want to sacrifice, if you want to give it all you got, but your partner doesn't, you're done. How many of you know what I know? Am I right? That's why today I'll tell you the superpower. Yeah, you got to be really skilled. You, you got to be, people say, I want to work smart, not hard. You're an idiot. You will have to work hard until you die. The minute you stop working hard, you go out of business. You get it? When you stop getting hungry, you're out. Someone else is in. You don't get to keep the belt. The one that has the chip on the shoulder gets the belt. But you got to be skilled. What does work smart mean? Well, let's go over it for a minute. I hang out with friends that have big fucking goals. Who do you hang out with? Just think. Your friends got little fucking goals? I'll beat your ass. My friends got big goals. Association for people that want more, that want to treat their family right, want to stay close to God, know that there's unlimited max on money, on mindset. I hear you guys say, no cap, no cap, no cap. Yeah, no cap on money. Shut the fuck up, okay? Dude, your fucking mindset is so broke and so weak and you're so entitled and your little bitch ego is gonna keep you broke your whole life. This thing goes to no cap before the income goes to no cap. Do you get it? And if I'm being raw this morning, this is how I wanna be with you. I want you guys to understand, I love every single one of you, but I want to twist some of you guys inside out or I want you to stop saying you want it. I either want you to change, recreate, and stop conforming or just go back and be who they said you were going to be. Go ahead. This is the last time I want you to tell anybody you're going to do something and not fucking do it. Today, you're going to get the Bible of entrepreneurship, of discipline, of winning, of mindset, of the art of achievement and the art of fulfillment. See, I decided that I wanted to win at about 18 years old. I went from being fucking broke to 18. I got in sales. If any and every one of you guys, if anybody's broke in this room, if there's any single person who's broke, you're like, fuck, dude, I'm broke right now. You know what? Get into fucking sales, get skilled, work hard. You won't be fucking broke no more. You know what I love about sales? This is what I love about it. You can be broke right now and you're like, I need 50 grand. You can get in sales and make 50 grand in one month. You can do it. And some of you in here, you can fucking do it. But you gotta believe, because I know this is a the truth. There are vehicles that'll pay you unlimited amounts of money if you get into sales. You can't be afraid of rejection. You can't care what other people think about you. You gotta get better every day. So, I sit there, got in sales at 18, made 125 grand, made 225 at 20, I made 500 grand. All the money I made, some of you in here want to make money, all the money I made fell between my fingers. By the way, do you want to get rich and get fat? No, I want answers. Rich and fat, yes or no? no. Or do you want to be rich and be a walking fucking billboard? Yes. Do you want to be attractive or do you want to be ugly? Right. Some of you aren't fucking answering because you don't want to answer these questions. You know what? Until you embody greatness, you'll never fucking get a taste of greatness. None of you guys in here will ever have one person follow you. They'll work for you for a check. Yeah, if you get lucky to become the fucking manager or whatever, the business card, good job. Nobody ever wanted to fucking be you. Way to live your life. You'll die with regret, swear to God. See, I'm waking up early. Today is the awakening. You guys know when you go to a worship service, you walk out of there feeling all fucking good? Today you're going to walk out of here and you're going to fix every fucking hole in your life. And it's not just going to be me. It's going to be my friends that I invited today that's also going to share their testimonies and their journeys. 
I'm telling you, one of the things that me and Jackie realized is that when I was on my own and she was like, okay, babe, go get it, I lost every time. I lost every, I lost every time. I got fucked over. I got betrayed. I fucked people over. I made decisions based off money. Rule number one to make money, never make decisions based on money. My team, the team that you walked in, this family, none of them worked for money in this company. None of them. Every one of them moved across the country to work here and didn't even ask what they were going to get paid. True fucking story. Talk to every one of them. As a matter of fact, none of them were even a coach. And most of them make seven figures a year now coaching. And you may say, I don't understand. I know you fucking don't understand because they changed and you want to know the fucking strategy. The strategy is to change. See, I wake up and go to the gym and I don't need anybody to fucking tell me. You guys get it? It's not like, hey, we're meeting at five. And I'm like, where's everybody at? I don't give a fuck if you're not there. I'm there at fucking five. This guy's like, oh, I'm like, hey, we're, like, we're done working out. He's like, oh, I didn't know we were doing it. You fucking didn't know we were fucking doing it? What am I, your fucking mom? Am I your fucking babysitter? You know what I'm saying? You say you want something, but you're not it. Shut your mouth. Today, I want you guys to become. If you want all of these things, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, want to get rich, want to build a fucking army, you want loyalty, they must want to fucking roll with you because you're the leader. Women can be this. Men can be this. And we're in a society that fucking hates this. Some of you in here, you're lazy as fuck. You're fucking lazy. You make bad choices. I know, I, I want to be, I want, see, some of you want to walk in and you're like, hey, man, this guy's not putting up the numbers. He's got 60 days to get his shit together. He's out of here. Hey, bitch, why don't you go be, be a fucking leader and go fucking help that guy make it? But you don't want to do that. This shirt says comeback kid. Let me be very clear. All of you in here have fucked up at some point and you shouldn't have got grace. All of you. When someone fucks up in front of you, do you believe they have the ability to come back? Yes or no? That's where you'll take over the fucking world. I listen to all these people with money and it's like at some point when people fuck up, they're like, oh, that guy fucked up. Oh, that guy. Or I see losers. Oh, that guy messed up. He can't get it. Here's what I'll tell you. If you've made a mistake, can you overcome it? Yes or no? If you can overcome it, now you're immensely qualified to help someone else overcome the same shit you ate just overcame. Does that make sense? Oh, shit. Now you're getting dangerous. So the ones of you in here that have, are the most fucked up are the ones in here who are going to become the greatest coaches, the greatest leaders, because you have the number one skill in the world. The ability to fix yourself, the ability when you're fucked up to unfuck yourself. You don't need someone else. Stop trying to convince people you're fucking worth it. Do you think you're worth it? Remember this. Every single one of you, your goal is to build something great in your life. Okay? A community of people will be the greatest thing you've ever built. If you build the right community of people, right? It's over. You're not building a job. You're building a family. Everybody understand this. It must be a win-win with everybody in your company. I hear people all the time. I pay my guys good money. I hear people all the time. They say, oh, man, I, I wouldn't pay my guys that much money. I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't either. You're a fucking piece of shit. You want to make all the money, and you don't want anyone else to have any. And one day, you'll be all alone. And every fucking year, you'll start the fuck over. Churn rate in our company, nobody goes away. And if they do go away... It's because they weren't fucking with us no more. I raise my standards every fucking day. I had a person last year stand up and he goes, that's enough standards. That's it. There's got to be a line with standards. That's too many. Get out of here. <laughs> By the way, this isn't good for HR. But I am HR. Or, or ja Jackie's actually HR. <clears throat> yeah, and she's worse than me. Yeah, she's worse than me. She's like, step in my office. We'll fucking handle this right now. I want to build the greatest leaders, the most richest people on planet Earth. You may never be Elon Musk, but you'll be rich. You'll put a financial fence around your family, and you can make as many millions of dollars as you want. But I want you to have a rich life. 
Don't be those billionaires on the fucking airplane that go, dude, we wish we were you. Be the billionaire on the airplane that's getting off and everybody's like, bro, you fucking changed my life. That's, that's what I want with you. The biggest cap in your life is your mindset cap. You've capped you. Hey, who's, who's the gatekeeper to your mind? You don't fucking run your mind. Your wife doesn't run your mind. Your boss doesn't run your mind. You let that in your head. You did. And if you did it, you're the fucking traitor. You're the traitor. Tony Robbins said something that really just fucking changed my life one time. He said, the greatest responsibility of your life is to be in control of your own thoughts. And I thought, man, that's so true because so many times, you know, like, like I wasn't, like, like I, wanted, I thought my wife was going to make me happy, but it was really going to be me making me fucking happy. And I just wasn't fucking happy. I was the problem. But I kept fucking being shitty to her because I thought she needed to change when really I was making up stories in my own fucking head of like, like shit that wasn't even real. Does that make sense? Hey, super important. And I don't know when Patrick's going to get here. But when he does get here, you guys have to take his fucking soul. Will you guys promise me? Okay. All right, listen. I have a rule. Never let anyone forget you. Never. Never let anyone forget you. Never. Ever. Ever. Never let them forget your fucking name. Ever. And so I want you to remember that until you die. You will not forget my fucking name. When I meet you, I will fucking do something. First time I met Bradley, I've told you guys, I walked up, grabbed him, I fucking gave him a big kiss right on the fucking forehead. And I was like, bro, we're going to fucking do big shit together. He's like, I don't like to be touched. I don't like to be hugged. And I damn sure don't like guys kissing me. And I said, well, bro, this is a new fucking relationship. So let's fucking do this. And, and he was like, this guy's fucking crazy. And he was right. I was crazy. But Brad goes, that craziness is exactly what's going to fucking move the needle in society. Cool. We got about 10 minutes for PBD gets here. So when he gets here, we're going to fucking rip his ass up. Okay. Patrick! 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 PBD! PBD! from the Middle East. This is cold, guys. <laughs> Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Let's go on ahead and give him one loud line to him. How you doing? He knows My man. Yeah. If he changed your life, give me a line to him on three. One, two, three. Jump in the Secret Service here. <laughs> that is hilarious. We are so excited to have Patrick Bent David and his beautiful son coming here. It is a complete, complete honor. Now, to us, this is very, very important and very special. You are the greatest mentor of all times, first of all. This man I can relate with because my family is immigrants. You came to this country for nothing. Proving everything. If you look at the American dream and what the American dream is, the definition of the American dream is what he has made with his life. Yeah. He came to this country, he proved that he can freaking make it without excuses. The whole speech that Andy made this morning was about that. Let's go! So anyways, this man is not only the best businessman, he is a family man. He does what, the, what he preaches. He's not afraid to speak his mind. Nope. Yeah. Super amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And we made a vow to him when we went to his first event that we were going to be his best students. I remember that. We made a vow. I so remember that. It is a complete honor. Please give it up one more time for Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
How you doing? How you feeling? Good. Good? Oh, by the way, I was just saying, walking in here, somebody whispered. I don't know whether you whispered or who whispered. This, this is uh, the president could hire the Elliott team for Secret Service. You guys could have done a better job. Holy moly, the energy here is something else. Grab seats, guys. Grab seats. Grab seats. Grab seats. We have a PowerPoint. Before I get into the PowerPoint, I want to kind of give you guys a couple things. Uh, to be thinking about, Sam, give me a signal once it's up, once they have it, and then I'll go from there. You know, in, to every group I go to and I speak to different audiences, for example, two weeks, I'm, two weeks ago, I'm in, um, where are we? We're in Palos Verdes. I'm speaking to the Chase's Small Business Owner Symposium. These are Chase's clients that are doing a certain amount of business. I'm there. We're talking to them. It's a very different energy. Everybody is proper, right? Everybody's very foo-foo, you know, they just come with a different kind of an energy. So the message to those guys is going to be very different. And I never forget when we had the call with Chase, they tell me the following. They said, hey, Pat, listen, uh, I'm the one that booked you and I'm the one that recommended you to Chase, Jamie, all these guys. I only have one request from you. I said, what's that? When you're on stage, please don't talk about politics. Whatever you do, just don't talk about politics. So I go there. Everybody is so nervous because they're worried what I'm going to be saying. So I get up on stage. I say, hey, uh, look, we had a big problem here before me coming on and speaking to you guys. Um, I point out to the lady that booked me with Chase. I said, we got on a call, and I almost didn't do this event because she kept telling me. She says, Pat, all I want you to talk about is the current uh, political climate, how things are with Trump and Biden. And I said, I don't like talking politics. And she said, no, I need you to talk politics. By the way, they're so nervous thinking I'm going to get into it. And I said, I told them, the only way I will come if you tell me I don't need to talk about politics. And I finally agreed. They have to agree we're here not having a good time. When you come to this audience, we'll typically talk about a quality that it takes to win in business, specifically in sales. It's a word that starts with the letter A, and that's audacity. You've got to have audacity, period. I can always pull back a little bit of audacity. You can be a little bit edgy, I can pull back. But it's hard to inject audacity and bring somebody up who's always a little bit too timid. I can pull back, it's harder to pull up, right? This group, the last thing I need to talk to you guys about with this group is gonna be audacity. You, you guys don't need audacity. You naturally have a lot of audacity. So respect to you. There we go, okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, crisis. You can go to the next slide with crisis. Um, Three reasons companies uh, go out of business. Number one is sales, lack of activity. Then it's sales leadership, lack of talent or personal development. And then it's sales foundation, lack of systems, values, and skills. I know a lot of great salespeople, but don't have any systems. And then there's no leader there that's driving it. But that's, that's one of the three. It doesn't matter what the product that you have. Any product you have, somebody's got to do to sell them. You can go to the next one. Next slide on this ship. If you look at this on a ship, there's four different people on a ship. You got the captain, who's the sales leader. You got the owner, who's the shareholder of the company. You got the water, which is the market. And then you have the crew, which is who? Supporting cast. Right here, we're doing this event. There could be a lot of salespeople, but there's a lot of supporting cast. The AV people, the guy outside in the skateboard thing, doing his thing with the camera. Did you guys see that guy or no? The way he was doing it, where is he, by the way? That was so impressive what he was doing. I was so impressed by that guy, what he was, Josiah, Josiah? Yeah. great name by the way. So there is that whole crew. Everybody plays a role on the ship. Everybody plays a role on the ship. You can go to the next slide. So the ship, the company, captain is you, the sales leader, owner, you possibly, shareholders, water market, high tide is momentum, low tide is slump, storm, crisis. Storm, crisis, election, shooting. Assassination attempt, AI. What's going to happen with AI? Tuesday night, I'm running an AI webinar. We're giving away a 30 page white paper. Everything, everybody we're talking to right now is AI, AI, AI. Even when we were in Goldman, they said 10 years ago, out of all their employees, for every 10 employees, one was an engineer. Today, for every 10 employees they have, four are engineers. One to 10, now it's what? Four out of 10 are engineers. Goldman, AI, machine learning. We're, we hire 15 machine learning guys to launch a new site that will be launched first week of September. But that's the crisis. Everybody's afraid. What's going to happen with AI? 
you don't get ahead of it, you're going to be destroyed. And guys are going to be laughing at you. That's just the direction we're going, guys. And there isn't anything. Well, let me tell you, AI is not necessary. It's never going to replace what human... I used to say that myself. There are so many things AI is doing right now for our business that allows us to accelerate in ways we never thought about. Does anybody know what's the most valued company in America? What is the most valuable company in America? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. NVIDIA. Number one, $3.3 .3 trillion. Apple's 3.1. You know what NVIDIA does? AI chips. Engineers, they get it. So the exponential growth of going, who knows the story of Jim Simons? Anybody knows who Jim Simons is? You guys don't know who Jim Simons is? Anybody knows Renaissance Technology? Does anybody know Medallion Fund? Oh my God, guys. Let me tell you the craziest story. This guy named Jim Simons works at the NSA from 65 to 68. What happens at 68? Vietnam, all this other stuff. He's working at the NSA. He tells the public, I am against Vietnam War. Guess what the NSA does to him? They fire him. He goes, becomes a professor, I think, at MIT and Harvard. Eventually finds a guy from MIT, brings him in. In 1982, they use AI. They start a company called Renaissance Technologies. In 1988, they launch a fund, like a mutual fund. First year does minus 4%. The next year does 55%. If you put a dollar in 1988 in medallion fund to today, you put a dollar in medallion fund, a dollar in the S&P, or a dollar in Berkshire Hathaway. Anybody knows Berkshire Hathaway? It's who? Buffett. A dollar in S&P, your dollar today would be $42. A dollar in Berkshire Hathaway today would be $154. A dollar in the medallion fund in 1988 today is worth $44,000. Their fund does 69% per year since 1988. They use AI and they used to say, well, in their stock, you should never sell stocks faster than a week and a half. You should sit on it for a week and a half. I said, why would I? If I see a bad trend and bad news, I'm gonna replace it in a day and a half. They start trading stocks and stocks at day and a half. This is crazy. You guys have no clue what you're talking about. They grow so fast that by 1995, they say, we're not taking new money anymore. It's a close fund. You know what they did in 2005? Medallion fund. They said, moving forward, anybody that had money in medallion fund that you don't work for us, here's your money back. We don't want your money. Take it out. Moving forward, medallion fund is only for current and previous employees. They shut it down for everybody. Only the people that worked at medallion fund. Look at the amount of brass it takes to say, we don't want your, can you imagine? Yeah, but I'm a $100 million guy. Yeah, honestly, we don't need your money. Everybody's begging me for my money. We're, we, we don't need your money. It's only for the employees. Can I work at the company? Probably not, but God bless. Man. You wish enough. 1982 is when they use AI. They ask, go ask, go, go watch the interview when they ask Warren Buffett, what do you think about the medallion fund? Look at the answer he gives. What do you think about the medallion fund? 69%. Do you know at the same time, Berkshire Hathaway is at 21%. You know what Ray Dalio is at at the same time? 12%. These guys, it's 69%. You can get to the next slide. Go to the next slide. So this next part, this is very, very important for this group. Very, very important for this group. Thank you so much. Very important for this group. It's fantastic. Thank you. Anybody's ever read the book, How to Mighty Fall? Anybody's ever read the book, How to Mighty Fall? I think it's a great book for everybody in this group to order. How to Mighty Fall was written by Jim Collins. It's not his most popular book, although I think it's his uh, most important book because his most popular book is what? Good to great, we've read it. Watch what he says. There's five stages we all go through. Hubris, born of success. You don't know, you're just excited. Undisciplined pursuit of more. I need to make more money, but you're not disciplined. Spend, 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 spend. Then denial of risk and peril. Everybody is saying, hey man, keep an eye out for this. Only the paranoid survive. Nah, we're good. This doesn't apply to us. Yes, it does. You're out of your mind. This doesn't apply to us. This doesn't apply to us. It's what? Denial of what? Risk. How many of you guys have close friends who were in the mortgage business three years ago? Nobody listened to anybody. They thought they were going to make that kind of money forever. What happened to them? Bam. Nine. Guys went from making a million dollar year income to $100,000 a year income. Who makes a million dollar year income? Who's made a million dollars a year for the last five years? Raise your hand. 
who's made a million dollars a year for the last five years consecutively. What do you do if this year goes to $100,000? How dramatically does life change? That's what happened to 90% of loan officers the last three years. Why though? Denial of what? Risk and peril. Stage four, grasping for salvation. You know what this is? You had a half a million dollars in a bank, went down to 400,000. I'm the one that's gonna make it because I got cash. Down to 300,000, I still got 300. This thing's gonna recover, rates are gonna come back up. Down to 200,000, hey babe. Holy shit, babe, we can't go to that restaurant anymore. Down to 100,000, babe, you gotta sell your purse. Babe, we gotta sell the other rolls. Down to 50,000, down to 25,000. That's what that is, grasping for salvation. This is when they get on their knees and pray like they've never prayed before. God, please send me 20 loans. God, please send me some new business. It's too late. What's the last one? Capitulation to irrelevance or what? Death. You're gone. 10 years ago, go study social media market and the influencer market 10 years ago. Go find the names. Where are they? Poof. Disappear. What happened? This is very hard for all of us who are major ego, pride, smart, you know, intellectual. We feel very good. We have a lot of confidence. We have intensity, energy. We don't like this because this doesn't apply to us. One of my guys, super arrogant guy, loved this guy like a brother. He went through a bad two years of season of walking like this, thinking he's better than you. I said, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I said, you're not a decamillionaire. Yes. I said, you don't think you're, you can lose your 100% of your business? Come on, Pat, I know what you're doing. Fear sharpens listening. You're trying to get me to be afraid so I can listen to you. I said, listen to me, bro. I sold the company. I, I'm sitting on a few hundred million dollars of cash. What are you talking about fear sharpens listening? I don't, you're, I'm not your leader anymore. I moved on. You choose who you want to be your leader. I said, is your business bigger than Kmart? No. Kmart went out of business. Is your business bigger than Toys R Us? No. They went out of business. Is your business bigger than JCPenney? No. They went out of business. Who do you think you are? What are you talking about? This happens to all of us if we don't understand this. The concept of business for me, I got two PBDs here. One on each shoulder. One of them is future looks bright. A couple of you guys wore the shirt, man, right there. I love it, right? Future looks bright. 51% I'm here. You know what the other PBD is here? Only the paranoid survive. In marriage, in kids, in parenting, in friendships, in business, in finance, in health, in everything. Today is the season to have both of these balanced. You don't want to be 90% just paranoid and scared because you're not going to capitalize off the market. You don't want to be 90% future looks bright and 10% paranoid because you're about to get your ass handed to you. You got to balance that out right there, right? When we're going through, go to the next slide. Next slide. So now, what matters more? You know the whole saying, Reputation is what other people think you are, but character is who you really are. John Wooden said that. It's a powerful quote. We've all quoted it. What's more important, reputation or character? You know what I would say? I used to say it's only character. You know what I say today? Both. You need both today. Because you need the reputation part in a marketplace that people keep coming back and they do business with you. But you also need to know character because people that do business with you closely, those people know who you really are and then eventually word's going to get out how this person is to work with them, right? If you can go to the next slide. So our job as leaders and individuals is to go through this as much as possible. Mario and I sat down one time, just like two years ago, three years ago, and I said, I want to find out what the formula we use to invest into our people. What are things that we look at and we say, this is a person that I can build long term, right? We notice a few different things. There are those who have strong character, they're good people. The way they live personal life, parenting, marriage, relationship, their body, the way they take care of themselves. When they say they're gonna do something, they do it. Strong character. Then you have people who have hard skills. They're coders, they're editors, they're engineers, maybe they know how to sell. You know, they, they got a hard skill that they can make money. A person that's got solid character and hard skills they can grow linear, linear 6, 12% per year, linear. You want to find out guys that are growing at 100% every year and they're taking their business to different levels? I learned it's the top two. Soft skills. You're in a room, tension is high, everybody's upset, everybody's afraid. Do you have the soft skills to challenge, drive, and know what to do today? Do you poke with challenge? Do you poke with bringing them together? Do you poke with this? That soft skills ability pays very, very well. 
Who's running right now for president? Who's the guy that's running for president right now that was number 45? What, what is he very good at? Barbara Corcoran said, I was in a room one time with Trump. The Chinese investors came to buy Plaza Hotel from him. They come there to talk about Plaza. He says, I'm the realtor, I need to close this deal, I need the commission. He talks nothing about the Plaza. He talks about selling the land around the Plaza. He said, I watched this guy show He's, he owes the government and banks $900 million, the banks, $900 million, give or take. He needs the sale. Doesn't show any fear. And he's selling the land. Then he sells the land. The next thing you know, you go. And he says, I've never met anybody to be as good as in sales as he is. He says, I learned Trump's biggest gift. He knows exactly your weak point and what triggers you, and he'll keep hitting you. Because that's how he knows for you to take action, right? That's a bit of soft skills and trolling. That's an ability nowadays. Connor, same thing. Marketer, Jake Paul, same thing. It's a skill set, it's part of soft skills. And last but not least is paradigm shift. Since 21 years old, I've been going to four events every single year. 21 years old, four business events every single year. Every year since 21 years old, four events every single year. What happens when you go to events? My kids are coming up in the car. These Elliot Army guys are hitting the window. Can you imagine these kids are like, <laughs> I look at them, they're like ecstatic. This is awesome. What the hell is going on, Dad? This is exciting, right? They're going to leave this place. They're going to remember that. They're going to be remembering that. What was that all about, right? <laughs> By the way, you go to these events for what? For what? Paradigm shift. By the way, go back and try to explain this event to your friends and family. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try to do it. How was the event? Dude, it was crazy. They were hitting the window, bro. Mom, they were literally hitting the window. Did you call the cops? No, not like that. I mean, what I'm, they were kind of excited. Were they on drugs? No, Ma, I'm trying to explain. You understand how weird it is? You can't explain it, right? You gotta be here to understand it. That's paradigm shift. And then you leave your eyes, they have a different fire in them. You feel it. You're like, man, I'm talking a different way. Your employees back at home feel it. Your sales team feel it. Your spouse feels it. My encouragement, every year, bring your spouse to events like this. But this is the part. If I want to see my guys make a paradigm shift, I assess them this way. Let's just say the five of you guys are working with me, I score all of you in those four categories. I'll sit there and say, when's the last time Eddie had a paradigm shift event? Two years. He needs it. I need to send him to something. Soft skills. Ah, he's a seven. He's not really that smooth. Character, great family. Nine, eight and a half. Hard skills, good. How do I help him with the other two? Okay, so this is the part about investing into your guys so the investment gives you high rate of return. One time, a CFO went to the CEO and said, hey man, what is all this money we're investing to our people? What if we invest all this money into our guys and they leave and join a competitor? And the CEO says a famous line, some of you guys know this line, the CEO says what? What if we don't invest into our guys and they stay? It's a bigger problem, right? Sometimes we put investments into ourselves and we send ourselves to events, but not our guys. Our guys need it just as much as we need it. If you want to go to the next slide. Next slide in sales. This is what I've learned over the years. There's three different skill sets in sales. There's a finder, you can call them a generator, they find clients. You got the closer, you put them in front of anybody, they're the closer. And the last one is a what? You know what builds the strength is? How you doing Danny? My man, good seeing your family, everybody good? Birthday card, anniversary card, a gift for a six year old daughter that loves Barbie. Boom. Man, he's really good to me and da-da-da-da-da. Great. He said, dude, let me tell you, Bryce, this guy's awesome with me. Hey, how do you like the way we treat you? Who do you know? Ba 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 Bryce, my entire business is based off of referrals. Bryce, hey, what's happening, man? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Boom, well, let's go to dinner together. We go to dinner. Hey, man, I just want to do what happened with him. Fantastic. Tell me about your family, birthday, ba 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 You send him something. You send him a book you guys talk about during dinner. Great. Works with you. You get him results. Man, you gotta meet Nick. Hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing, man? And then boom, we go in there and say, Yo, let me tell you what's going on. And boom. That's the builder, right? In Hollywood, does anybody know what a trifecta is in Hollywood? What do they call tri trifectas in Hollywood? Dancer, actor, singer. Name a trifecta. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. What was that? J-Lo J -Lo used to be. J-Lo used to be, right? <laughs> but she for sure is a trifecta. Justin Timberlake? Justin Timberlake? Jamie Foxx, Will Smith, 
Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. Yeah, you know what? Elvis Presley. By the way, we were watching Elvis last night, just so you know. It's a great movie, yes. Zach Efron. Huh? Zach Efron. Zach, is Zach Efron a trifecta? Is he? Okay, cool. Sounds good. But in sales, how many of you here, be honest, don't be cocky, be honest with yourself. And if you're here with somebody, the other person should hold you accountable. Who here thinks they're a trifecta? See, it's not a lot good for you guys for being honest. Can you, can you guys watch? Raise your hands and look around, folks. Can you raise your hands? Look around how many it is. Look around. How many hands are up? Honestly, how many is that? Like 15? Is it fair to say it's less than 20? Less than 20 out of six. Okay, let's say 30. Less than 20 out of 600 people are trifectas. That's 5%. So, a lot of times we only recognize who? Because it's like, man, what do you call closer? And then never gets a referral. I call that a one night stand, salesperson. And honestly, you're not gonna last long with me. I'm interested in this. This is what I want. I wanna see you be here. And if I got a trifecta, I've never met a trifecta who sold a good product that's made less than a million dollars. I've never met a trifecta. If he or she's a worker, I've never met a trifecta make less than a million dollars, never. So for us, we're always scoring again. How many guys got more than 10 salespeople? Raise your hand if you got more than 10 salespeople on your team. Today, on your to-do list notes, score every one of your top 10 sales guys based on this. And then invest in areas for the guys that suck in finding to get better in finding. Invest in areas for guys that are not good closers to get better at that as well as builders. So what do you guys, if it's builder, teach them to read the book Unreasonable Hospitality. If it's a phenomenal book, right? If it's closer, teach them audacity, right? If it's finder, maybe teach them books on prospecting, how to start conversations, maybe books on EQ, maybe books on social intelligence. But you have to kind of see what they need and from there make the investment into your guys to develop them, right? That's our job as leaders. Keep going to the next slide. So next, every great office and environment that wins the more the pressure comes from the top, that team is not independent yet. Of course, I'm always bringing, last night I had a conference call to 12 o'clock at night with one of our teams. Of course my job is to bring pressure. But the best of the best environments, the pressure comes from peer pressure, not me. He shows up late to the office, 11.30. Keith has been here since eight o'clock, they're buddies. They're like, Eddie, what are you doing, bro? Well, you know, I just have to take care of the plumbing. Bro, this is the third time you've used that excuse. What's that all about? You say you want to do $200,000 this month, you've been late three times. Seriously? Instead of him, watch this. Hey, Pat, you know Bryce was late today. Eddie was late today. He came at 1130. Hey, Eddie, why were you late today? Why are you doing that? Don't put it on me. Take the lead. You go to Eddie. Hey, I can't believe Eddie was late. Why are you telling me? Do you see yourself as a leader? Keith, I do. Go tell him. Okay, okay, I will. Watch what happens. The entire day he's avoiding Eddie because he's scared of conflict. The entire day he's avoiding Eddie. At five o'clock, six o'clock, so I had a conversation, go with Eddie. Oh, we've both been very busy. Bullshit, go for a five minute walk. You're scared, Keith, that's the problem. That's why you have a hard time leading others because you're afraid of conflict. You're a great salesperson, you're closer, but man, you're scared of conflict. No, I'm not. Go have a conversation with them. Go like this. Hey man, I believe in you. You're one of my favorite coworkers, running mates. But I gotta tell you, on our team, you can contribute so much more if you come in on time. Three times you've been late, you've given me the same excuse as plumbing. What's up? Then they go for a walk. And I watch. Boom, boom, boom. And then you know 90% of time how it ends? From window. I don't know what they're saying to each other, but this is how it ends. You know what he's saying? Thanks for bringing it up. And then you know what he walks away saying? Wow, that wasn't that hard. Let me call out the other guy. Hey, you were late too, bro. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I like this. I want to do more of this, right? But it's the Cayman Escape or Ray Sanders leadership. You can go to the next slide. I'll kind of go through some of this stuff quickly because of the time that we have here together. So quality, successful sales leaders. They're consistent. They show up every day. They set the tone. Giving up time and energy, patient with effort and activity, but not bad attitude. I am not patient with bad attitude. We're going to address it right away. I can be patient with the other stuff, but not a bad attitude. Soft skills, conflict resolution, giving praise and recognition. 
The best kind of praise is behind people's back. Talk behind people's back as much as you can, but in a positive way. Let it get to them. It's 100 times more exciting. Focus on organizational growth through leadership development. Challenges and holds people accountable like Keith and Eddie right now we just talked about. Puts the team first, their dreams, not yours. Meaning, what are your dreams, Keith? Some guys come up and say, let me tell you what my dream is, guys. You guys are going to help me get it. I want to buy a $5 million house on the corner of this. Nobody gives a shit. But let me tell you, when I talked to Eddie last night, we're having dinner with him and his wife. You know what they told me? Eddie, you okay if I share it with everybody? Yes. Last night, you okay if I tell them what happened with Mary last night? Yes. Mary broke down last night. You know why? Let me tell you why. She held Eddie's arm, and I watched how she looked at him. She was emotional because she was so proud that Eddie was her husband that was working on his way to have their dreams become a reality so her mother who's cleaning houses can stop within six months. You should have seen the look on Mary's face. You're a rock star. That's the message. Not get me a house and a stuff and look how awesome I am. Boom, like this. Leadership development, right? Let me continue. Doesn't try to change people. Zero judgment. You have a choice, guys. Small life, big life, you tell me. What do you want to do? Everything is binary. You want weak leadership or strong leadership? Strong leadership. Strong leadership. These are the choices. Weak leadership, let me recommend you to that dealership over there. They're hiring. Strong leadership, this is what we're doing. You pick and choose. Everything's binary. You have a choice. My kids, Dad, can I eat this chocolate? Of course you can eat this chocolate, but there's no iPad this weekend. Oh, okay. Hey, can I have a Coke? Yeah, but if you go to movies, there's no slushy and, ice, and no uh, popcorn. All right. Hey, Dad, can I go to X? Of course, but you don't get this. Pick and choose. It's your choice. I don't care what you do, choices, right? It allows the individual to make the choice, and you're forcing them indirectly to make the better choice. Speak the language of storytelling, dream selling, align with the company and code of honor, drives without division, earns the right to lead, and has moral authority. Let's go to the next slide. We've got 10 minutes. <clears throat> Toughest question I've ever asked people. People I hire, people I work with, who do you want to be? Do you know most people don't know how to answer? If I ask most of you guys this question, I'm willing to bet. If I asked you without you being prepared for it, 95% of you don't know how to answer this question. I'm telling you, 95% have no clue how to answer this basic question. The book, Your Next Five Moves, you know what move number one is? Who do you want to be? What life do you want to live? I've made it clear what I want to do with my life. So I don't need sympathy. I chose this life. Look how hard he's working. Why do you feel bad for me? I made this choice. This, this is my vision. I don't need sympathy. I chose to do this. My son, he wants to one day play professional sports. Okay? We're in Hamptons. He trains every day. Hours under the sun. Trains every day. If Melba says, Poblecito, does anybody know what that means? I still don't know what that means. But to me, it's like, poor kid. I don't know what Poblecito means, right? Is that what it means? I, I said, Melba, this is not a Poblecito. Okay? Don't call him Poblecito. Then I'll say, Dylan, that's what it's going to take if you want to win. I don't feel bad for you. I got you. Okay, great. You want to eat this? One night we come home. It's like six months ago. You wanted to eat like a cream cheese sandwich at 10 o'clock at night. What was it? You wanted to eat something like that, right? Do you remember? Was that what it was? And I said, you want to eat it? Yes. I played a video. Anyone's ever seen a video with Ronaldo talking about a son like sweets? Who remembers that video? You've seen it? I played it for him. I said, guess what? You want to eat it? Go eat it. Go ahead. You want me to make it for you? So I start taking out the... I don't want you to make it. No, I'm going to make it for you. I'm not going to eat it. I'm making it for you. I told you I'm not eating it because I'm going to play one day. No problem. I won't make it. <laughs> what do you want to do? So I don't feel bad if you want it. My son, all this son, he likes politics. If you sit with him on a one-hour ride, 59 minutes of it is about politics. And I'm being dead serious with you. That's all he wants to talk about. What do you want to do with that long term? There are certain things you got to do. So continue with the who do you want to be. In sales, you have two positions. You have the sniper and the platoon leader. If you can go to the next slide, we got seven minutes. Snipers are people that are all looking for what? The sale. Everybody they see, all they think about is the sale, right? Single-minded, closer, hones craft specialist, believes in self, loner, knows the enemy killer. Sniper. I have a lot of snipers who are great salespeople. But some of them are like, well, why don't I, I want to be a platoon leader one day. I want to be a sales leader one day. Really? Yeah, this is how a platoon leader thinks. Lifts morale of others. Looks for the enemy. Multidimensional. They can be also generalist. Makes others believe they lead their supported, their people person. 
The, it, the, the lens is a different lens. The sniper, like, you know, we have a guy, who knows the guys on the podcast? Anybody knows Adam? When Adam goes to Miami, what lens do you think Adam has? You guys know what lens he's got. Oh, Pat, but I want to get married and have wife and kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. You want to get married and have wife and He goes, he spots them like this, boom. 27-year-old girl right there, she looks good. Somehow, some way he's talking to her. Because he's a sniper. He's not trying to be a father and a family guy yet. He's not made that decision yet. He doesn't yet have the lens of family. He's only got the lens of the womanizer, the playboy, right? That's a shift everybody has to make in sales and business and personal life. You can go to the next slide. So, there's a bunch of things here on referrals. I'll go through this fairly quickly. Probably 50% of our drive here with Brian was about referrals. And the way I explained it to him is in every room I go into, I want to find a way to get to the next room. I told him the story. I said, I wanted to have Kobe Bryant at our event. But I started off with James Worthy. We brought James Worthy to our event in 2010, and we hit it off. We became friends. Then there was a Laker event. I went there. James Worthy sees me. Oh, what up? How you doing, man? Good seeing you. How's everything? Great. Let me show you the locker room. We get the tour of the locker room. We're playing basketball at the Lakers Staples Center. Shaq's there. Kobe's locker room. And then, boom. Hey, Magic. We want to put him at the next event. Magic comes to our next event. What up, Magic? Pa, 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 pa. Boom. There's him. And then Kobe. And then you guys saw what happened in Kobe's interview. When I did the Kobe interview, it was reaction everywhere. They call it the greatest Kobe interview of all time. Quarter of a billion views. You know how many people have licensed that interview? All over ESPN, first take everywhere. Reran short clips all over the place, right? And then Kobe causes, well, me and Shaq get into a feud. Then Shaq shows up and he's going to the next. And then one night, I'm doing my thing. I get a call. Hey, Dana. Patrick, is Dana here? I'm in Abu Dhabi. I got a guy that wants to talk to you, Brad. You okay if I put you in a group text? No problem. I get on the phone with Brad. Hey, what up, Brad? Hey, I'm uh, Rock's manager and I'm, you know, uh, uh, LeBron's manager and I'm uh, 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 Megan Merkel's manager. We go to Beverly Hills. I have a three-hour meeting with him. I look him up. He's the main guy at WME Endeavor. And then from there on a Sunday, I get a call from Dwayne, DJ. Now he's coming to the Vault Conference in six weeks, five weeks. He'll be at the event. We're doing a podcast together at the event, 90 minutes. Some of you guys will get a chance to ask him questions. But everything for you has got to be like, boom. What's the room? That's the room. How do you get to that room? You ever see people that go and work the room, and the way they work the room, they're just dancing? You know, some, some people go like this prospect. How you doing? My goal is to get 50 cards today. How you doing? They're doing. They're doing. Holy shit, bro, relax. <laughs> and then you see some people go in the room. How you doing? And they're just kind of dancing. Yeah, let me introduce you to this guy. Oh, cool. What's up? Boom. Oh, good to me. Let me introduce you. Boom. Something. 18 minutes later, he's in that room. Your goal is to get into that room. Because then after that room, you get to the next floor, and then to the next floor, and then you go flying to another place, and you do the same thing, and you get to the next floor, and you get to the next room, and you get to the next floor, and then, no, 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 next floor, and then presidents, billionaires, da -da. Now you're in all the rooms. Now it's just to get into any room you want to get into. That's referrals. This is the great equalizer with referrals. Manage expectations early with referrals when you're selling the client. Go above and beyond for them. Be patient. Deepen the relationship. Identify centers of influence. Give stories. Give referrals. Give referrals. Like you give referrals. A lot of times, by the way, some of you guys have questions for me. You can always connect me there. I literally respond back in audio within 24 hours. When I'm walking my dog, I'll do 50, 60 minutes. You can ask me a question about business by downloading the app Manect and asking me questions. You know what I'll typically do? Hey, Pat, I need a referral of somebody that's good at doing this. Manek with this guy. Call this guy. I need a trademark lawyer. I need that guy. No problem. Download Manek, ask me a question on Manek. Referral, referral, referral. And then that's how we end up doing business together. Sometimes you just want everybody to give you referrals. How about you give referrals? We're all like, we all want to give it to me. What's for me? No, no. You give it. You give the right referrals to others. And then knowing what your ideal client looks, looks like, on our drive here, I ask, what does your ideal client look like? So they told me, Eric Klein, is there an Eric Klein here? I think the name is Eric Klein. Where are you at? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of good things to say about you, brother. Okay, so we, we, the whole driveway, we're talking about you, kind of a stud you are and what you're doing. So I want to know, why is he the ideal client? Well, pa, 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 pa. interesting. 
How do I get more ideal clients like Eric Klein? You're constantly trying to find that out. But the question is, what does the ideal client look like? 11, give them options for ways to help you. You can either help me with the referrals. You can either help me with a recommendation. You can either help me with a sending a text to the two of us in a group text to make the intro. Give me options on how I can help you. And then surprise your clients, say thank you. If we can go to the next slide. Um, 10 principles, we can skip this. You can go to the last one, we'll wrap up. Okay, so a couple things I want you guys to be thinking about that I think this is something that I think you will like for what's happening with this. So, is it four years ago? Is it three years ago or four years? 2021. 2021. I'm at the, by the way, you posted that video. I'm like, I freaking remember that. 2021, it's COVID, no? It is COVID. So I'm like, stand up, who do you want to be? What do you want to do? Remember the whole question, who do you want to be? 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 He stands up. What's your name? Andy. What's your last name? Elliot. Or maybe the other way I asked the question. What's your last name? What's your first name? Andy. Andy Elliot, right? Who are you going to be? We're going to be the best sales training company in the world. Oh, really? Okay, awesome. At least he knows. Next person. It was so quick. Because who says that? Everybody says that. I just moved on to the next person. And a lot of people were declaring their intentions in that room. Last year he comes in, talking, gives me a ridiculous, I would have worn it today, but my belt doesn't match the watch, or else I would have worn it. I wear the watch all the time that he's given me. Nicest Hublot watch, such a beautiful gift you guys gave me that he wants to watch, by the way. Dylan's already making a, a decision on which watches are going to be his in the future. He's got his eye on that watch. But then we see them being where they are today and the organization they've built. And we see this Elliott Army everywhere. We see the brand everywhere. We see people wearing the shirt everywhere. We see them walking around. If there's one thing you can tell is what? The, the six pack, the, the big ass quads. And I gotta tell you, I'm so impressed with the Daisy Dukes this guy wears. Like he, his stuff is here. He puts it out, right? right? He puts it out everywhere. No problem. And then you see her doing the abs on his neck with the legs around and then she's doing it on one of these things, whichever one it was, you're like, holy freaking moly, these guys are really going after it, right? And now they build a culture where a lot of people are now saying, six pack or you're fired. Now they don't mean it, these guys mean it, right? If you don't do something like that, they've set the tone. This is the uh, QR code to the vault conference that we're having in the first week of September. For the next 24 hours specific, this is not public, this is just for you guys. I run a monthly general mastermind, that's $10,000 per year. Anybody that registers today to the Vault Conference, you're going to get a one-month free registration on the next mastermind that we're doing as well in the month of September. I think it's August or September. You'll get an invitation, but it's only available to you guys. One thing we know about this guy, I think you've already said you're bringing how many this year? What's the number? You've already had 50-something? Yeah, well, we're shutting our company down, and we're going to the Vault. The whole thing is going there with you yeah, guys. The level of commitment this guy's got is something else. But, and, and by the way, Mario will always ask questions. says, hey, Pat, I always ask him. Hey, Andy, what do you need? What can I help you? What can I help you with this? Says, I can never get him to tell me what he needs. It's always when I ask Andy, how can I help? Andy flips it. No, no, no. We don't want anything. How can we help? What do you guys need? So this guy doesn't just say this kind of stuff from stage and not do it behind closed doors. Mario shows me the text. Pat, what do I say to a client that I'm trying to help? That they say, no, how can I help you? There's a reason why... We are here today in 200 degree temperature. This room reminds me of Iran. I feel like I'm back in Tehran, Iran, spending time with you guys with the suit, but it's been a pleasure being with you guys. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history if you are? In the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Thank you. But to us, it's so much more special when it goes to somebody that we really, really care about. And I know the type of guy that you are, and we just want to tell you that you've built an incredible team, and we recognize that. We want to recognize somebody on your team that's been with you throughout the journey, and that person is Mario. I love it. Come on up here, Mario. <laughs> He has an amazing heart. 
family, we, we talk about different things. He asks for advice. He's, he's a, extremely loyal. He loves you. And we recognize that. He's been with you for how many years? 19 years. 19 years. Obviously, he looks up to you, and he just wants to just do everything for you. But not only that, we've seen the way you talk about him. We've seen the way you talk about him and his family and how we remember the story about him and his wife getting together, all these different things. We, we pay attention to to all those things since the bulls, first bowl we went to. So we just want to recognize and give him a gift just because we know that it. would be special for you. I, so, that is amazing. So this is for you, Mr. Thank you so much. Let's see it. Now, guys, hey, the number one thing that we pride in life is loyalty, okay? If you're with somebody, you're with them until you die. You get it? It's not a fucking job. It's a marriage. Until you die. And so we wanted to get Mario something because he embraces wow. true loyalty um, to, oh, to Patrick. That is sick. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But, Mario, we love you, but hey, loyalty is something that just doesn't exist. Everyone of you know what I'm talking about, right? This guy stays by his side. Patrick called the shot a long time ago. And he f***ing rode with him. Oh, that's and that's why today you want ridiculous. something you learn in this room is loyalty. So guys, give it up for Mario. And yeah. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. Guys, today I'm here with my amazing wife, Jacqueline Elliott. You guys know her, my, my running mate. She's my uh, battle mate. Um, and I'm here with Patrick Bet David, which you guys know. We talk about him all the time. Um, one of the greatest influencers ever made. Um, he's a badass leader. He's a badass uh, businessman, family man, team leader, just all around. You're just a savage. And you're getting smarter every day. And it seems like you've studied everything and you figure out how to do it better. And anything that you, like, you don't take bets, you can't win. It seems like if you say you're going to do something, you win it. And so. That's bet David. Right? Yeah. <laughs> bet David, yeah. It's in the name, huh? Yeah. yeah. And he's here with his awesome kids. He's got his two sons over here. They're awesome. He flew down here. We're in Scottsdale. And, man, I just asked him truly, like, to just share, you know, 15 minutes of wisdom, right? My shirt says, come back, kid. To be honest with you, like, when I started watching your stuff, um, you said, like, future truth. And that right there, like I told myself a lie that I was somebody. And that was the best lie that I've ever told out of all the lies that I've told. And that one was one that came true. I was like, I'm going to be this guy. We created a vision board. Um, you were like, what kind of person are you? And I was a person that ran from a state of madness. I saw you do it. And I'm like, well, if you can do it, then I can do it. And then I'm just like the comeback kid. And I've just shown everybody what a transformation looks like. But you're the guy that we've studied that has guided our family. So thank um, you for being that example to us. Yeah, I appreciate it. For real. Do you feel so like me. most successful people, you know, have to come from a state of like being hurt in order to appreciate and grow and, you know, to their max potential? Because that's that's what we feel. We went through a state of pain. We went for working for, for the wrong people, you know, like having bad jobs, betrayed, all these different things. You were driven. And obviously, you know, you have your families from Iran and then you came, you know, to the United States and you, you did different. I mean, you see things differently. And I see it the same way. My family's from Mexico. You know, we have mm -hmm. we had to prove different mm -hmm. ways. So in, we're immigrants. And um, I look at the United States and I love the United States and the opportunity. What do you think that is a common trait that most people that are successful have? You know, can you relate that to pain? No question about it. So last year at the Vault Conference with Tom Brady, if you remember when I'm talking to Tom, I said, Tom, you know, when I think about guys that compete not in the top 1%, these are guys that go top 1% of 1%, right? Like, for example, you start a YouTube channel or a podcast, and they'll say, never read the comments. Uh, I'll have my guys, and I'll say, this podcast, I want you to read every comment mm -hmm. because the comments are giving you very good feedback. You were off today, and you were disrespectful. Listen to it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Got it. This podcast, I don't care what the comments are. Don't worry about it. But sometimes we need to be given that feedback, right? Mm -hmm. When we're talking to Brady, I said, my experience is people that make it to the top 1% top, top of 1% mm -hmm. have three things. One, they experience unconditional love from one person in their lives. Mm -hmm. Typically, as a kid, it's your mom. Mm -hmm. Later on, when you get married, it could be your wife, right. husband, somebody like that, right? But one person you need. You don't need a thousand. You just need one to know mm -hmm. that this exists. Mm -hmm. Number two is you need unconditional pain 
from one person in your life that no matter what you do, you will never get approval from that person. Mm. It's pure pain. Mm -hmm. like, no matter how much money you make, no matter how many championships you win, no matter whatever you do, it's nothing. It's never enough right. with this one. But you're never going to win this person over. Yeah. And then the last one is choosing your enemies wisely. When, when you hear people that we read about or you know, we see in movies or they run elections and they win or they become billionaires or if you go read Elon Musk's book, you will see the unconditional love, his mom. You will see the unconditional pain, his father. And you will see the enemies of people that said, who do you think you are? You think you're gonna go to space? You think you're gonna do this? All the people that were his heroes were the 60 minutes interview, he breaks down, he starts crying. I mean, you got the formula right there in front mm -hmm. of you with Elon, right? So mm. for, for some of us, as we get, as we choose to do bigger things, um, you're gonna have people that are gonna come from your past yeah. who you messed up with, mm -hmm. not even the other way around. Sometimes you screwed up, right? And they wanna come out and they wanna tell everybody that you messed up. You're mm -hmm. gonna have that, you have to be okay with that. Yeah, That's of part of the you know, territory. Yeah. You know, like right now, you know what Elon's experiencing right now? His son, have you seen what his son is saying on Twitter? Mm -hmm. Trans son, that he says the, they killed my kid because he's woke now and all this other stuff. His son is now retweeting at Elon and trolling Kim. Think about how humiliating mm. that is for your trans kid to humiliate you on Twitter. What else is more painful? You think a previous coworker is going to be that painful? No. You think a previous partner no. or your child that has your blood. blood that is publicly saying these types of things about you, that's painful mm. that you're going through. Right. So we have to be ready for that because with the limelight, with the success, with the money, with the accolades, with the attention, with the fame, whatever it may be, you're gonna get all of that stuff. And then that's the next level of graduation in life. How do you handle that? And then most people don't know how to handle that. That's why they go and then they disappear. Mm -hmm. And then a few people they go, they can handle this level, they can handle that level, they can even handle this level, but they can't handle this level. Boom, mm -hmm. they're gone. Yep. Capitulation and irrelevance like we talked about earlier. That's the part where you have to emotionally, social intelligence, try to kind of tell yourself where the whole meditations concept with Marcus Aurelius, where I had a slave sitting behind him saying, hey, Marcus, mm. you're not as important as you think you are. Mm. You're not as important as you think you are. I love that. I yeah. love that, right? I have Frost my guy, uh, Ashan, my uh, video guy. What do you tell me before every video we make? I want everyone to live the life that you live. No, no, no. That's when we make content. Yeah. I tell him all the time before I shoot a video, hey, Andy, I saw this other guy that's competing with you, and he made a better video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell him, I said, dude, I want to know. Because when I start this shit, I don't want to think that I made it. I want to think that I'm trying my hardest to build something. I, wanna, I need to stay grounded that someone can take it all Zach Johnson won the Masters once, and they said, so, Zach, how does it feel being a Masters champion? Golf. You have reached a pinnacle. What does it feel like? He says, I'm going to feel good for a few minutes, but when I get back home, trust me, my family's going to remind me how much of a regular person I am. <laughs> so that's it's the true. benefit sometimes, that's right? Of being around, you're like, hey, relax, bro. Can you get me some popcorn? I'm a master chef. Get me some popcorn, Zach. That's life. That's Jackie. Yeah, right. To me. Yes, yeah. I would chop she, his she, legs off like, all babe, the time when he feels I'm like, so babe, cool. We just did this, and she's like, "Okay, cool." She's like, "Remember, we're in this to help people. That wasn't. That's not about you." Yep. Okay, now let's yep. get back to it. Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, well, that's ending." All right, let's go back. <laughs> um, but most importantly, look, um, guys, we're in Scottsdale. We just did a big event. Uh, this guy is my mentor. I mean, I know you guys know who Patrick Bet David is. If you don't, you can go follow him on YouTube on Valuetainment. You can go look up Patrick Bet David um, on you know Instagram. Really everywhere. You just search it. And he's everywhere i mean you're the the builder of all the greatest entrepreneurs on planet earth and you're young i mean you're 45 i mean you're going to go down in history right as like a guy that played out a big part of a lot like you should be really happy and Lots that should make people you were chanting really... pbd for president <laughs> yeah. but but i know this you're you're making history right and i just want you to stay psycho because all of us psycho people that you know are chasing your your mind right your heart, you know, the, the, the standards that you run on, um, you're a real dude and that's just awesome, man. And, uh, anyway, so I just want to say like, uh, love you, man. And then we're grateful. My wife, um, it's a pleasure to have you down Likewise, here. Appreciate you. You know, Mario asked me the other day, he's like, well, he's like, what can I do? I'm like, Hey, we want PBD every year. 
Like that's what we want. Yeah. You know. So what does that mean? That means this. This is our home. Having we need you a with bigger us. room. Well, it's exciting that yeah. you guys are building. Yeah, Bradley's yes. always like, "Hey, you want me chip? In, you want me chip in on the AC?" I don't know what <laughs> like human <laughs> heaters, <laughs> man. It was, like, it was it was an ice. We we, we put six hundred people that in a small could have room. Been a comedian. They sucked the life out of it. I don't know, yeah, but I, um, I just want to say I'm grateful for you. Um, our whole company's shutting down to go to your event at the vault. Um, you know, every year, guys, he does a badass event at the vault. It'll change your life. He literally gives out millions of dollars of value. I think the minimum ticket is like. 900 bucks and then you can go like uh ceo big dog tickets for like 15 grand it's you can wipe your ass with that kind of money especially in a world that f prints free money you go learn this you get back out there and you kill it and so the value you provide and the structure of that book that you give is just dude, we still incredible. chew it up and every yes. year it's a little bit revised but when we look at the last year it's we like compare them. we're different. No, no, no. But we're different now, so it means something different now. No question. Yeah, yeah yes. it's, it's like, like reading the Bible. Like, it means yeah. something different yes. every time. Yeah, like what did it mean, you know, in 2023, and what does it mean in 2024? Because we're totally different human beings now. So we like to hear you re-explain it each year, and you add just a couple little pieces as time changes. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, but thank you, man. I want to respect your time. So Anytime. we love you. We appreciate it. And uh, you're saying like pbd.com, right? Uh, down there, you're saying where people want to reach out to you. Uh, is that Manect? Manect. M I N N E C T dot com. You can download the app. You can. That's the only place I respond to messages. Yeah. So only somebody there. wants to reach out to Patrick, you can to go to Manect, download the Manect, app, and literally. App. Yep. Yeah, one of our guys, um, I think he paid. Joshua or something like that. John, Jonathan. Or jo or jo Jonathan. He's like, you like iced tea? I said, Arnold Palmer. He's yeah. like, I got Yeah, you. but he was like, dude, he's like, Patrick responded. I was like, dude, that's so cool. Um, I was telling Jackie, I was like, man, we need to get on there. That's crazy. Yeah, that's oh, you awesome. guys are cool. So, is, is that yours? Yeah. Is yeah. that your? Yeah. Yeah, I need to get on yeah. that. That's awesome. Okay, but hey, I'm grateful for you. Love you, buddy. Guys, have a blessed day. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.